Hi everybody. So I'm sure you know by now, if my hair is back and I'm sitting on the floor, we're gonna be talking about bustles because that's where the work for a bustle is, is at the floor level. And having your hair back means you'll sew less of your own hair into your dress. <laughs> so these are the dresses that I bought to use for samples. And I'm really excited to kind of look through them today and see what they all have in common. Um, today's tutorial is gonna focus on separating the layers and what that really means. And I'm super excited because each of these has different pluses and minuses, different little characteristics that we can talk through. So um, each of these is pretty popular a silhouette. So again, I'm just stoked because, um, yay, you know, it's nice to see what we're actually working on in real life right now. So I'm going to start with the center one because this one's going to get a whole video of its own. I mean, each of these at some point is going to get their own whole video on different topics, but this one is one that everybody struggles with. So I wanted to talk about it first because look at this situation. You can see as I started picking it up already, I mean, this is nicely tacked together. These layers aren't going anywhere and these are about nine inches spaced out. So you can separate these layers and put tacks at all these locations. Very doable. Have I done it? Yes. Did I regret my decision? Yes. So there is actually a better way to work with this style that requires you to not separate it. Um, the struggle on this one is where do you pick it up? Because when you pick it up, sometimes these long pieces between the tacks dangle and they look gross when you try to hang it all up. So this style, like I said, is gonna get its own whole video. I almost don't recommend separating this one. Kind of just depends on the style that you're going for as far as, um, if you're flipping a ballroom style, definitely leave it together. You can actually use the tack spacing to guide where you're gonna put your ballroom bustles. So that's cool. If you're doing an American, um, what you're gonna do is look for, so here's two tacks right here. You're gonna go up in between where the tack is and that's gonna be your pickup spot. So that way it's creating another point of tension between these two and it will hopefully keep your skirt more level at the bottom. So that's kind of one way to combat this situation. This is gonna need its own whole video just because I feel like this is a really hard one for most people to tackle. Part of the reason this is so difficult is because you can see the layers are different widths and they're tacked that way on purpose to distribute the layers properly. So you see that top layer that top layer is probably 12, 13, 14 inches, and it's more or less gathered down to that 13 inch mark. So it's meant to keep the fullness together and keep the skirt organized. So that's why separating it doesn't always work nicely because then you have to put tacks through all the layers to regather them at different points. Okay, let me get into one that's a little bit less detailed because like I said, this one is really important to talk about because I think it trips a lot of people up. Okay, this is more of a standard train, more of a standard situation. And standard meaning we see this frequently also. So these layers are more closely sized to one another. They're, the lining and the top layers are almost cut the exact same width minus is a touch. I would say there's maybe two inches wider on the top layers than the train uh, liner itself, um, which makes it a lot easier to do. Now, we're going to talk grouping and we're going to talk lining layers. So on this particular train, we have like a mocha champagne liner, single layer. You can see we're right at the seam back there. And then we have two top layers of shears. So we have two tool layers and we have a, it's called a swing tack or a train tack. Um, it's just a crocheted piece that holds the layers together. And you can see if you pick up the center back, this all moves together really nice. Um, for the most part, one at the sides and one at the back is helpful. When you spread this out to go down the aisle, it might not all stay together as nicely as how this one does with all of the tacks at the skirt. And sometimes the bride will ask you for some tacks extra to keep it like together at the bottom. I like to do um, snaps so that way you can still do a nice bustle. So all of these dresses 
and I think mostly every skirt I've ever seen train wise except for a few designers don't put tacks in at all and then and then we have to add some because they look crazy um, this little tack you're gonna want to clip it and this one has a secondary tack any tack that you undo you either need to put it back the same way you found it or you need to put it back with a snap okay now the reason we want to separate these is to be able to distribute the fabric in a way that's beneficial to the bride so this style of dress is a fit and flare i don't want to get anywhere near her butt with all this fabric because it's not going to look good on her and there's obviously exceptions to the rule. Every so often I pin a bustle and I'm surprised by the one that they choose, the one that looks good. So obviously this is very subjective, but this is just so you know what goes through my brain when I'm doing these. Now this style of skirt on this train here actually looks like it's not gonna be super like crazy, which I'm really excited about. I work on a lot of crazy bustles. <laughs> so you always start with your center point and I don't have a model in here, obviously. So I'm just gonna look at like what goes with the floor right now, just to kind of process through. Now I've done this thing lately that is kind of new to me and I really like it. So I try to be really conservative with my point count on my bustles because I don't wanna charge a million dollars, but I also don't want there to be a million points if I don't need them. So I used to go center, left and right, leaving three points. However, on a skirt this small, I'm going to see if two points based out, it does, it looks cute. So what I like to do then, instead of having three points that are kind of close together, I'll space them out a little bit. So you can still use your center point to get an idea of where to go. I'm going to, I'm going to pin that real quick. Let's, I didn't bring pins over. I don't know why I didn't do that. You obviously need pins for this. Okay, and then marking, I'm always going to use safety pins for my pickups. Uh, it left a little crease. <laughs> it left a little crease where I pinched it. And then I mirror everything that I do because when I pin up a bustle, I want the bride to see it at the fitting so she can approve it. And that way if she has an issue with it, I'll be like, this is exactly as you pinned. Um, and if it looks different, we can adjust it. But um, having them see the final look or as close to the final look is really helpful. It gives everybody a good feeling on the inside. Okay, so let's go ahead and pin this up and I'll do it up close. So I'm going to mark the level that I need to put the pins at. And then depending on the situation, I might still do two separate anchors or two um, anchors on the dress, two buttons, but I might just do one depending on the situation. So um, I have to see how the top layers fit on the bride. If they're too chunky, then uh, putting them at the center is not going to help anybody out. So if you put them separate still, like at that same level, just an inch and a half off of each side of the center seam. And also, I don't like to do um, joins. I don't like to hang too many things off of one button because I feel like that confuses people. Um, and I don't like to do anything that's going to be confusing. And I try not to code too much because I feel like you will get lost in the coding as well. So if you have two buttons and two loops on the same layer, I feel like that's not a gatekeepy vibe. Okay, so two, and that's gonna kind of do the work of three points, which I love um, because that might help buy me some, some ability to do more points on the top and to keep the count low at the same time. Okay, so now we're gonna roll down this top layer. And I pinned this up without thinking about it because this is just my habit as far as how I do bustles. So if I don't have the bride hold it, um, I'll pin it like this. I kind of roll it out of the way and pin it 
up to get it out of my way for what I'm doing. On a fitness layer, she can't really reach down and grab these layers because it's tight and it will pull the edges of the things up and give me a false read of the skirt because the train tacks on the sides. So I would much rather just pin it like this um, so that way I can see what I'm doing. So now we'll let this go. And because we have put the fabric down here for the liner, all of this area up here is fair game to use for anchoring the top layers. And it's gonna just control the bulk of where the fabric is going again, so we're not adding volume to her butt, unless they want it. Sometimes brides will be like, yes, booty, add that on. Okay. This is looking good. So I've always, I always start with the center one. Even if I decide to go with two on the side or a box out situation, I still am gonna figure out where my floor level is at the center back seam. Just, I don't say it's out of habit, but I feel like it's a good habit to have just so you can start establishing where you're at. I've also learned over the years to go ahead and get your center seams lined up and pin them together because if you don't, the layers can be shifted and then you're having to correct a lot of things at your table later and it's just not any fun. The goal for me is to pin this so accurately that I can go sew it without having to think about it, without having to straighten anything. I could have somebody else pick it up and sew it and they're not gonna have to guess um, or ask me, hey, did you pin this perfect? Because they just know that I've pinned it in a way that works for the dress. And even if it's not centered perfectly, sometimes, you know, the bride will have a high hip or whatever. You still wanna pin it as you're gonna sew it. So that way it's as perfect as possible. Okay, so, and I just start with a point. And honestly, the way this is looking down here, I should show you the bottom. It's not gonna focus. <laughs> Welcome to my professional channel of excellent camera work. <laughs> it's not gonna pick up all the layers with just this one point. I definitely still wanna do one on each side. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that pinned up here. Let me see if I can back this up a little bit. You guys definitely didn't come here for professional camera work, so I don't feel too bad. Okay, does that show a little more? Maybe that does, okay. So I'm gonna throw this guy, nope, that still doesn't show you the hem. That's okay, I'll flip the camera around and go back to you. So I'm gonna, uh, this is the first point, and there are seams here to use. So always start with your seams. Look at your seams, because those are the strongest part of any skirt. I'm gonna go ahead and put a safety pin at the center point, because I like that. And same thing over here, I'm gonna smooth this out and grab there are seams on both. Sometimes your layers will have different numbers of seams or in different places, which is kind of not helpful because then when you go join them up, they add some bunching. It can be um, common that the spot you pick up needs to be in a blank spot. Um, there are ways to anchor into a blank location. It's not recommended though because it's just not as strong. Okay, so let's start with here. And this is going to keep it right with the split of the dress. You can see right here is when the dress gets wide. So having no person in this dress, this is where I would give a guess to putting a bustle for right here. Okay, so that's what I would guess at. And again, I have a touch still on the floor. Now when I just put the layers together with the seams, I didn't like how it was pulling. So I might go ahead and just grab the top layer and kind of let the puppetry <laughs> of those side tacks work for me. And yeah, it does look like, it does look like this one would need a pickup in the middle of blank space, which is not fun. So what do you do in that case? Okay, so yes, you can sew in the middle of blank space or you can grab a little motif from the dress somewhere else, you can harvest another piece of lace and use it as your platform. So you can sew it on in that blank location. And honestly, this is just on the top layer because the rest lifted just nicely on its own. So separating these layers kind of reminds you, okay, I might be working with these in different capacities and that's exactly what this one is doing. Okay, so 
that's a do as I say, not as I do. It's funny how when you start recording yourself, you do things differently than you ever would. I don't ever put a pin in my mouth and fill up a minute. Of course, I'm recording myself. Okay, so those are gonna be my two supporting points for the sides. Let's figure out where I want these to go. I probably want them to go down a shade from where I'm gonna put the center point just to keep that triangular balance. I feel like a dress always looks beautiful if you have kind of that triangular shape to the train bustle versus putting them all in a row. Okay. There we go. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. And so by separating the layers and handling these, I have now created different locations for all this fabric bolt to go. And that way, so we have the layers down here and the top layers are up here. So this is as smooth and as flat as possible for this bride. If she's wanting like a very, very low volume look. I think that would be really, really pretty. Okay, so that's like right where the hip splits off on the dress. So that's where those anchor. And you can't even see where the lining is anchored. And you see you have a nice level bottom down here. Nice and swishy. And again, obviously this is not on a mannequin. So it is low volume because there's no button here. But you can see that added no volume to the dress. So I would say that's a really nice option for that dress. For a bustle. Okay, so this train is next up to take a look at. Now this one has all kinds of stuff going on in here. So we have our train tack, we have a satin lining with horse hair, we have two top layers that are definitely cut the same width as one another because they are sewn together at the bottom with a single um, turned hem. And these layers are different sizes to one another. As I'm holding them up, I can see the top is much, much fuller cut than the liner is. So let's first start off by cutting this. And then I'm gonna show you how I sew a snap in this. Um, yeah, this is a good time to do that. Let's just do that now. Okay, so, um, needle. Needle grab that really quick, okay. Half this video is me crawling on the floor. <laughs> So that's where, you know, that's where bustle work is, is on the floor. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this to separate. And then I'm gonna pull out the old thread that's like left over. We don't want that anymore. I'm going to take my crochet thread, crochet thread, the needle that works with it. And I'm going to cut off a length of crochet thread, <laughs> words crochet thread that will be enough to do the top of the snap and the bottom of the snap. So I'm going to hold this bottom piece and there's two ways you can do this. You can either go up and in one side of the snap and then back down about an eighth of an inch next to it. So you can see it's gonna dangle and you can tie your knot behind it. That is one method that works. And I usually will leave a little slack because I want this to still have that soft swing. So you can see how it's like got a little bit of dangle. So you can knot that off in the back or you can do a sparrow head. So this one's a little bit different. So you could take Take your crochet thread and make it into a loop. Tuck it up one of the holes of the snap and pull the tails through. Like that, see how it's all connected? And it's not going anywhere. Okay, and then you can thread this through your needle. Cut that right off and thread both through, just like that, Beep. make sure you grab everything. 
this particular needle takes can fit to in the eye, which is awesome. Ta-da, okay. So both of those are in. And then you can just go straight down into the middle. And then from here, you can tie this in a knot and you can throw a button behind this to back it. So I'm gonna do that. Let me go grab a button really quick. Let me see. There we go. Okay. Clear button. And then you can just throw one side through. So pull one of your threads out. Because you don't need to take both of them into the button. Ta -da. And you could actually re-thread re this and go up through the other side. Let's do that now because that looks pretty. So this particular style is a little bit overkill. And the reason I show this one is because this is helpful for a very heavy train uh, because this is not going anywhere. This snap is very, very durably installed with the button backer and the double. Like this is not going to be popping through the seam anytime soon. Okay, so I have both drawn up through the through the button. I'm gonna move the button out of the way and I'm gonna go ahead and tie my knot. I'm gonna hold both of my threads together. And I always use the needle to help pull it through because I don't have fingernails that are long. Okay, ta-da! And then I do trim the back of my, because I don't wanna leave that ugly tail. I'm gonna trim it just a little bit. Make it look nicer. Okay, and then so from the top, you have a retractable, very durable swing tack that's very organized looking. Isn't that nice? So I do like this method a lot versus just going in the one hole because I feel like it looks really polished. From the outside, and the sparrow head knot just means that these are like closer together. I don't know, they just look a little nicer. Details. Okay, so let's roll this bad boy up. I keep moving all my stuff around. You'll see just how like acrobatic <laughs> bustles really are. I think this is why they get exhausting because we're constantly moving around. Okay. So let's get this guy out of the way. Now this dress is wide enough that I could actually have the brand reach back and hold on to it for me so I wouldn't have to like pin this up. I don't love making extra pin marks in the dresses. I don't have to, but you know, this just helps you see where you're going. Okay. Gorgeous. Now, now we can address this layer with the horse hair. Now horse hair is notoriously finicky and has its own personality. So it's again nice to be able to handle this one on its own. You could even ballroom bustle this to get that shenanigans out of the way if you wanted to. Um, I like to leave it down because it's it'll keep the consistency around the edge. So this one definitely I think this one will need three. So the wider you get apart with your points, the more you need to have. So on the last one, our points were very close. So I could just do two points, but this one, I think will definitely benefit from three separate points. Okay. And then, and then I also will hold the side to figure the next one. You can actually see where this, see where these puddles start forming. That's a guide for where the dress is having too much fabric hanging. So maybe look at that as a pickup option or somewhere in that zone. Try to read what the dress is telling you as you're working on it and it'll really help. Okay. Well, let's just get this guy out of the way. 
Now these supporting layers down here can build the foundation for the shape of the top of the buckle, the buckled skirt. So you want to make sure that whatever you're doing down here works with the overall goal. Now if she's wanting to ballroom bustle the whole dress, this is not the right foundation for that. So this one, I'm going to show with a French, I think, because we haven't done that one yet. And that would look really pretty with this dress. Okay, so I have this top layer separated now and the liner has been handled and this is exactly why you want to separate your layers because you've taken a complex problem and you've broken it down into some smaller more digestible parts so this is really the reason why the first thing that comes in our mouth when someone's struggling with a bustle is did you separate the layers because this just makes it so much more manageable so let's take a look at now what we can do with the top layer so when you're showing a bride some examples um, i don't pin out with safety pins on the first go when I'm trying to figure out what her vibe is. Um, I usually will start with an American and be like, oh yeah, I could look like this. And I would give a general, you know, a general pin up like so, you know, pin hang kind of a vibe just to get her impression. If she loves it, then we go for it. If she hates it, then we move on to the next one, you know? So like that, so I'll show this one. And you can see this has nestled on top of the liner really, really nicely. This looks very traditional, very, I don't wanna say expected, but it looks like, you know, what you might presume a bustle to look like. Sorry, I got hair in my mouth now. Um, so it's not like wild and out of the ballpark. You know, it's not a crazy bustle. A lot of brides are afraid of crazy bustles and I totally get it because like some bustles look bad. It's just the truth and not all bustles look good on every dress. Okay, so I show them a quick version of an American and then I will show them a quick version of a French. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to show a quick version of a French. So on each bride, I start with the center and I'm going to look for some proportional areas to start lifting. I don't want to be near her butt with this top fold at all. And I'm going to try to show two sections. So lifting up this first um, fold here actually gets us pretty close to being the right length already. But I feel like a lot of dresses look good with a double French. So um, we can start with this and see if that's her vibe at all. Because she might be like, oh, I hate all the fabric tucked like that. So, and I'm going to work just at the seams right now. So bringing seam to seam. Just to see how this folds. If it looks cool, if it looks crazy, if she loves it, if she hates it. And then if I get her vibe, I'll perfect it. So this is just quick and dirty. Okay. And then I still have a little length. Oh, good. Because on the center back, I do think it looks pretty if you can get two points on the center. Because this is a pretty whimsical style bustle, so why not lean into the whimsy, you know? And give ourselves another little hiccup here. And then that is short. I would probably redistribute this a little bit differently, but depending on what's going on, you might not have the opportunity to redistribute. So in this case, you could add a snap right at the hem to hold the layers together to close off those small, um, short areas. That's a lifesaver trick right there. If you can add a snap to the hem to keep some short layers from showing, that's a really cool one. So that's a neat option. I really like how that looks. You could um, divide this out further and double stack every point. Um, this one's been pretty popular right now where you do three and then a single down here. It's a really cool look, kind of soft, like I said, whimsical. Let's try a box out. I always forget about these because I feel like it's a little too structured for this style of dress, but you never know. You know, some brides might really like that vibe. And a box out is where you grab So right here where the dress splits off again, 
I'm going to look at my center seam for finished length. And then I have two seams right here, so I'm going to make this be as wide as the seams. Okay, so this is what this looks like. This is a little bit different. I would love to get a mannequin or a model or some, you know, I get a butt so you can see how these actually lay on people. But this is a good way to introduce the value of separating these layers because you can play with them individually and see what looks better. And you can see I'm not having to fight the whole dress. I'm just having to work with the layers singularly at a time. Okay, so boxing it out would go like this. And this is just a very flat bustle shape that goes seam to seam up here. This does not work for every train shape. This one works for this because this is kind of a um, short oval. So this would be very, very nice. This is a very minimal. And I would just rearrange. Let me see if the angle is down a little more. So you can see how there's lining showing still. This on a person, this lining might not show because her legs are in butt also help like lift things. So I hope this has been a helpful video for you. If you're struggling with a bustle right now on a difficult train, consider separating your layers and seeing if that gives you a little bit more of an edge and the ability to kind of separate out the problems and handle them one at a time and see if that ends up coming up with a better solution for you. This might become your favorite technique to use when you're working on a crazy bustle the next time you get one. Alrighty, well, you guys have a great day or night wherever you are. If you like this content, subscribe. I'm gonna be doing a lot more with these same dresses this year. Uh, these are my sample dresses to go over all kinds of details on. I'm going to be doing a lot more um, bustle theory videos because they seem to be really helpful for everybody. Again, these aren't full tutorials on exactly how to do all of everything. This is talking about like the whys and the little extra details that are really helpful to learn too. So subscribe if you want to see more with these particular dresses and let me know if there's any other details that you specifically want to see that are kind of maybe unusual or different and I'll get those made up for you guys so you can have them as references. Alrighty, well, I'll see you soon.